Hey, welcome to Dex World, another video in the IGCSE accounting series. All the topics in the IGCSE accounting have already been covered. You can check the videos in the playlist. This video is going to be on limited companies, the financial statement of limited companies. If you've not already watched my video on limited companies that is there in the playlist, I would suggest go and watch that video, understand the concepts, understand the important terms and then come back here, solve the question, check the question, check the solution with your answer and learn from your mistakes that will make you improve your score in the exam. So the question we have here is X limited provided the following information. Opening balances are given for retained profits, general reserve is given, debentures, issued share capital. If you realize out of this debentures is a non-current liability whereas all other elements are part of equity. Certain transactions are given and after that we are required to prepare a statement of changes in equity and then a balance sheet extract showing the presentation of equity and non-current liabilities later. Let us start with the preparation of the statement of changes in equity. So we have a format of statement of changes in equity here. The statement of changes in equity will begin with the opening balances that are mentioned on 1st August 2020. So let us note down the opening balances and also fill in the total columns at the same time when we are doing the transactions. Let's go on to the transactions. Net profit for the year is given as 90,000. Let us record the net profit for the year. The net profit for the year will be written in the retained earnings column. Then we have the interim dividend paid per share of $0.2. Now, obviously this is per share. So the dividend per share will have to be multiplied by the number of shares. If the rate of dividend was given in percentage, then you would multiply it by the value of the share capital. If you do not understand this concept, again, I would suggest you to watch my video wherein I have covered the concepts of companies in detail. Since dividend is given in per share, I will have to multiply the dividend per share by the number of shares. What are the number of shares that I have? See the opening balance of the share capital was 200,000. This is made up of $0.5 per share. So the number of shares Calculation would be opening balance 200,000 value of share capital divided by 0 0.5 400,000 shares I had in the opening balance. Then when I go down last transaction it says issue of additional shares of 80,000 on 1st August which is the first day of the year. Obviously interim dividend is paid during the year so interim dividend would have been paid on these 80,000 shares also. Keep in mind this point else you might make a mistake and not take into account this 80,000 when calculating the interim dividend. So I would add the 80,000 shares that are issued during the year. So total number of shares 480,000. This will be multiplied by 0.02 per share. So I will get an interim dividend of 9,600 that will be deducted from the retained earnings column. Then we have the final dividend per share paid in the current year for the previous financial year. Again, if you know the concepts well, you would know that the final dividend is always recorded in the year of payment. This dividend though it belongs to the previous financial year, it was not recorded in the previous year when it was proposed. It will be recorded in the current year when it is actually paid. The dividend per share is 0 0.1. We've already calculated the number of shares as 400,000. Next question arises, should I calculate the dividend, final dividend for the previous year on 400,000 shares or 480,000 shares? Obviously on 400,000 shares because these 80,000 shares were not an issue in the previous financial year. So our final dividend paid would be 0 0.1 per share into 400,000 shares, 40,000 deducted from the retained earnings and also in the total minus 40,000. Then we have final dividend per share proposed for this current financial year 0.15 per share. 
the proposed dividend is never recorded in any of the financial statements or in the accounting records so this will have to be ignored it will be recorded in the next year when the dividend is actually paid in cash transfer to general reserve of 30000 now this transfer to general reserve will be deducted from the retained earnings and will be added to the general reserve column so no difference or no change in the total column Issue of additional equity shares have been done, uh, 80,000 shares and each share is 0.5 per share. So the total value of the shares issued would be 40,000. This would be added to the ordinary share capital column and also in the total column 40,000. Now let us calculate the closing balances for all the elements of equity and also in the total column. So we've got the total, total of 240,000 in the ordinary share capital column, general reserve 105,000, retained earnings 420,400 and finally the total of all elements of equity 765,400. These values will be used in presentation of the equity section in the balance sheet. Let's go ahead and prepare the balance sheet extract as required by the question. This is the balance sheet extract format we will directly begin with the presentation of equity and then the non-current liabilities no other elements of the balance sheet will be presented here so under the equity section we will have to write out the various components of equity the ordinary share capital would be there dollar 0.5 per share 240,000 as we have calculated the closing balances in the previous section then we would have the general reserve as 105,000 and the retained earnings as 420,400. The total of the equity section is 765,400. After that, we can present our non-current liabilities. Under the non-current liabilities, we have debentures from the opening balance and we assume that that is also carried forward towards the end of the year. So debentures 200,000, that's the only non-current liability as far as the information given in the question is there. So we will present that in this balance sheet. So this completes our uh, presentation of the balance sheet also. I hope this example has helped you solidify your concepts on companies. You, you become more confident in this chapter. If you have any doubts, you can always comment below. I will be happy to reply to your doubts to solve your doubts. And I'll see you soon in the next video.